So I recently watched this video in which Noah from Blackform Prod got his brother Liam and four other devs involved in a challenge in which they made a project without any sort of communication. And it also looked like surprisingly good fun and something that I would like to try myself. So I set about assembling the Avenger, uh, a team of other game developers. Once that was done, a plan was formed. I would start the project and then send it off to the shelf man who would then pass the baton over to Tarot Dev before games by Sol and Samyam would work their magic on it. And then eventually the project came back to me so I could make this video. With that introduction out of the way, let's just see how we all got on and how the project evolved over time. And we'll start with yours truly. So the first thing I needed to do was come up with an idea. I went over to the BAFTA Young Game Designer Game Idea Generator, that was really hard to say, because even though I feel old in my bones, I'm young in my mind, so I'm allowed to visit this site and no one can stop me, okay? The idea that this generated was, the environment should be a supermarket, the goal would be to remove all enemies, the genre is arcade, rules will be bounce off the walls, and a wild card, if there was time, would be to include a magic spell. All in all, not too bad a concept, so I got to work in Unity, starting up a new URP scene, got all my usual packages installed, and got to work. Using ProBuilder, I started to put together some simple shelves and the floor. I then added a placeholder cube, which would be what the player would control. Setting up a Cinemachine follow camera and a basic rigid body controller, we could explore this basic environment. The goal of the game, according to the generator, was to remove all enemies, and what better enemies than tins of beans? I put a small cylinder as a placeholder for the can, and I got to work coding some simple movement, again using rigid bodies so they would chase the player and roll after it. After I was happy with their movement, I set up spawners on the shelves to fire the cans into the supermarket. It was then time to jump into Blender to create the shopping trolley, which the player would be controlling, followed by creating a simple cylinder which I unwrapped and made a texture for in Photoshop. Ooh, look at this little message here, I wonder, wonder how that got there. The last piece of the environment puzzle at this stage was to create a proper shelving unit and fill it up with beans. And with that, that was my part done. Here was the current state of the game by the time I was done with it. And now remember, the other devs didn't know what the generator made for me, so they were going into this blind. So let's see how the Shelfman reacted to the strange creation I had made. Hi, my name is the Shelfman, and uh, I guess it's now my turn to look at the project. Oh god. This should be quite interesting. Let's see what we already got. So I'm not entirely sure what happened to the project, or what it is exactly. Okay, so I'm some kind of shopping cart, and I see a lot of shelves with beans, and uh... uh uh, oh god, the <laughs> beans are coming for me, oh no. <laughs> what is this? Oh my god, it's so sensitive. There's there's a lot of beans, there's a lot of beans. Alright, so I do have some ideas. <laughs> this is so stupid, I love it. Alright, I've got, I've got some ideas, I've got some ideas what we can do with this. So currently, this is where we are. I consider it a supermarket. We got a shopping cart and we got beans. We love beans. So I was thinking, how about we have customers somewhere, I don't know, here, that will appear, disappear, whatever. And each of them has their own idea of what they want. They want something from the store and they want it fast. And you need to try to get it to them as quickly as possible. Let's get to it. So I started off by blocking off the area where the customers would be and then actually making the customers themselves. Okay, works for me. You've got a beautiful head. How do you feel about it, sir? Yeah, I figured. I then made sure to change the player's starting position with no struggles whatsoever. I can do this. <laughs> I can do this. I can do this. It's completely blind. I can do this. Then I defined some products and let the customers decide which of the products it is that I want. Why does it keep saying load of bread? <laughs> I did the loaf of bread thing again, people. <laughs> And if you don't deliver it to their area within the given time, they'll ask for a new product. I made a couple of models for a loaf of bread, a water bottle, and a banana. Oh my god, it's a... It's a banana with an identity crisis, I like it. I am not a 3D modeler, so this is really the best I've got. <laughs> and whenever you collide with one, the player will know what object you're holding, and when it's the same as the product the customer is hoping to receive, you get points! I can do it! I can do it! Yes! So that is it then for me. We went from escaping beans with a shopping cart to escaping beans with a shopping cart, but with a purpose. <laughs> now you gotta try and give people what they want, like the good shopping cart you are. So good luck to whoever comes next. <laughs>
Hey everyone, I'm Taradev. I do Unity and C Sharp tutorials on YouTube. I have just been given this project uh, from the Shelfman, so I have no idea what he's done. Although I did see a tweet from Dan a little while ago and I saw some shopping cart madness. So that looks fun. Uh, keen to expand on that idea. But uh, yeah, let's just jump in and see what's in store for me. It's very bloomy. Okay. All right. Can I move the camera? <laughs> okay, I'm not very good at this yet. After playing around for a bit, I had a good idea of what I'd like to accomplish, starting with the visuals. I added some skid trails to the cart to really emphasize the awesome drifty controller. I then replaced some textures, fixed up the walls, and added some ground reflections to drive home that shopping center feel. I discovered one of the guys did in fact have a system in place for holding and returning items, so I expanded that to hold three items and have them visually appear in the cart. I then went AFK to make a sandwich and uh, yeah. I thought it was time to add some audio, so this obnoxious skid sound was first. The camera was a problem. You can't really see what you're doing, so I panned out and added additional zoom depending on the cart velocity. I think it works much better. I wanted to do something with the points we accrue by collecting items, so I thought a skill system would be best. I added a platform to purchase the battle ram skill, which lights up green when you have enough cash. I'm not sure what this area was meant to be, but I decided it should be a safe zone where you can take a breather from the evil cans and level up your cart. I just hit my time limit, so I wasn't able to add a decent sound effect to the skill, but here's my end result. It was a lot more fun than what I was expecting. I'm really excited to see if the boys will add any more skills and I suppose uh, an actual aim to the game as well, apart from just accruing money and spending it. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, pass it on to the next guy. Hello everyone, my name is Saul, and welcome back kind of to Games by Saul, but not really. I got invited by Dan Poz to take part in a past project type of video, which Dan has probably explained in this video, where a group of developers start off with one project which someone started and it gets passed along to other developers after that first person has worked on it for a few days or a few hours. A few hours probably for us. Dan's probably explained that better, so I'm going to just move on and talk about what my part of the video was. So before I get into my part, I got in the project by Tarudev, who gave me a pretty good base to start off with, it looked really cool. I saw a lot of potential, in like a supermarket where you control a trolley, there were beans attacking us, and there were points you could get, you could collect items and sell, and there was an ability. And I saw the ability and I was like, that looks pretty fun. So I wonder what I can do with that. So I had to look at how the system was set up and it was really cool because it was my first time doing like a proper team based project like this and seeing everyone's different workflows and trying to adapt to them. So luckily whoever made the abilities did it in a scriptable way. So I'm not sure if Tara made the abilities but whoever did they set up a scriptable object so I could just make a new one and I thought when the beans surround you you can't move so I needed to do something about that. So I had an ability called Bean Blast where you kind of like do an explosion around you and it blasts everything in the radius around you. And by the way, I only had four hours for this, so I had a few ideas I wanted to get down, and I got most of them down, but not to as far as I wanted. So the main thing I wanted was the pushback ability, like I said, and I did that. It's basically, you know, you press a key and boom, anything around you gets blasted away. And you deal damage, because the beans had health, which I didn't realise until much later on, and when I saw that you could actually deal damage, but you need to go quite fast to do enough damage to kill them. So it was a bit of a mixed one. I also thought we needed a new item, and because of the pandemic, I thought toilet roll. Because, you know, that was bought a lot, so I quickly modelled some toilet roll and blender. Uh, I actually did <laughs> painted the texture on like a little black line for where it rips and I threw that into the game and it looked good enough. Um, some of the things I didn't think was like the game didn't actually have like a purpose right now, you kind of just did it indefinitely until you got stuck. So I added in a timer and when the time runs out it kind of tells you what your current score is, which is a bad thing, I should have done your total score, that was my fault, I'm not sure if anyone else fixes that later on. But yeah, so it shows your score and you have the option to restart or quit which then led me to making a pause menu where you could show the controls and you could restart the game if you got stuck because the beans surrounding you got quite annoying. I was trying to think of a solution for that, like maybe if your velocity was zero for enough time, but then I thought once the players just stop somewhere, it's not the best. 
And then I thought like the number of beans getting spawned was like destroying the performance for a bit. Like it could do, like if too many got spawned. I don't think there was an upper limit on how many could be spawned. So I added that. I added a quick thing, which I think I currently just kind of made it so the person, like the developers, we decide how many. So I think I set it to like an upward limit of a hundred and that's how many can be spawned. And when one is destroyed, it lets another one be spawned, etc., etc. And I didn't really do get enough time for a lot more. I had like four hours to work on this project because I kind of left it quite late and I felt bad because I had forgotten to do it the week before. So I kind of left people waiting. So I kind of just got straight into it and did what I could. And I was pretty happy with everything I added. When I gave it to the next person who was Sam Yam, who you should also follow, you should follow everyone. I mean, I'm sure Dan sorted all that out as well. Um, I kind of realized that I set the beam blasts cost to zero. So hopefully Sam picks up on that. If not, it's fine because it's a really useful ability. But I'm really looking forward to seeing what Sam does to the project. I want to say thank you, Dan, for having me in on this. It was a lot of fun. Hope to be involved in more of these kind of projects. Definitely be cool to kind of see. Thanks, everyone. So I just want to preface this by saying that I was a little sick, so my voice sounds like three octaves lower than it actually is. But I got invited to this super awesome collab, and I had a lot of fun. So when I opened the project, I was very confused because I just saw a shopping cart in the middle of a supermarket, and there were no instructions on what to do. So after being pummeled with cans for a couple of minutes, I realized as I drove through the supermarket that I could pick up stuff and put it in the designated areas. From there, I looked through all the code just to understand what's going on, and I realized there were also abilities I could use, which I did not get that at all just from the gameplay. So judging from all this, the first thing in my mind that I needed to implement was some sort of instructions. So I made a new scene in Unity, made a quick menu with Text Mesh Pro, put in some fancy animations, and then at the bottom, I added the instructions. I'll admit, aren't great but at least it gives some context to the user on what they're supposed to do. I also decided to name it Shop Stop because I was trying to shop and the cans were stopping me, so what better name than Shop Stop? Now, I didn't really want to mess with the mechanics of the game too much. I just wanted to add feeling to the game so it could feel more polished. I added some rock and roll background music so you could really feel tense while being pummeled with cans on your way through the shopping mall, cart, supermarket whatever it's called, added camera shake, which was actually pretty easy because Cinemachine has a built-in camera shake, which I have a tutorial on if you're interested. So I just had to add a script to our cart, Cinemachine Impulse Collision Source. And basically when anything collides with our character, this collision source listens to it and then sends an event to Cinemachine, which Cinemachine is listening to with its impulse listener. And on receiving that event, it shakes the screen. I also thought the shopping cart was lacking something and ragdolls are always fun. So I decided to implement one after a quick YouTube tutorial search. It was pretty easy to get it set up. I downloaded a model online and then as I don't know how to rig a character, I just used Mixamo's auto rigger, which was super easy to implement. You just drag these little circles around to the areas where the bones are. And after a minute or two, it just rigs it for you like magic. And after adding that to the scene, I attached the player hands to the shopping cart with fixed joints, which basically attach two game objects together and they follow each other without actually being parented to each other, which is very neat. Did not want to have the ragdoll be a child of the cart because that would be messy to implement. I still thought the game was a little bland, so I added some bananas and toilet papers to the walls just to memify it. And I also randomized the light and intensity of the light so that it can look like you're in a disco party while being chased by cans in a supermarket because why not i also added a little warning sound on the timer so that when it reaches less than 10 seconds it beeps so that you have a audio cue because sometimes i would get a game over and it's because i didn't realize that the time ran out and finally i made the game easier i increased the time from 60 to 90 seconds i reduced the rotation speed to make it a little easier to control the cart but honestly i think it's pretty hard to control still but i think it's part of the fun so i left that in and finally after those changes we have this awesome final product which just feels like pure mayhem compared to the original project that i received so yeah definitely enjoyed doing my part back to you dan 
And there you have it. That was Shop Stop in all of its glory. But there was one thing left. I had to actually see the final project for the first time, give it a play and just see what we'd made as this weird dysfunctional team. So let's take a look at my reaction to the game. Okay, so since the start of the project and me passing it on to the shelf man, I haven't actually seen this. Um, and since then it's been to Saul, Taro and Sam. Uh, Sam was the final person back to me and here's a build of the game. It's called Shop Stop apparently. And there's a little banana for the icon, so let's just see, see what the uh, the mess is. I'm very concerned because Sam said she can't believe what she did to the project. Okay. Ooh, I feel like we'll have to. Uh, feel like I might have to uh, mute that audio. So let me just turn that desktop down. Although I'm not sure, but yeah, it's it's kind of groovy. Okay. Shop. Stop. Start. Deliver products scattered around the store to their designated sections. Collect items to buy abilities to help fend off the nasty cans after you. Was to move space and E for special abilities. Also, I should explain very briefly the outfit I'm wearing. It's uh, a blanket hoodie. I'm currently recording this late at night and it's freezing. So, you know, just trying to be cozy. Uh, all right, so let's just hit start. I also like how these toilet rolls look like they've got some smoothing on them and the banana is just uh, very jaggedy. But yeah, let's hit start and have a look. Oh my God, oh no. Oh wow, this has changed loads since... Oh, here come the beans. Oh, whoa! There's, a, <laughs> there's little trails and stuff behind the trolley. I love that someone's attached to something to the back of the trolley. Okay, we've got, we've got a box of something. Bananas and toilet roll. Is that all this place sells? Oh, and water as well. Okay, uh, banana. What is the box? Is that toilet roll? Oh my god, what's the box? I love the lighting. <laughs> Wait. Oh, this is so hard to control. Right, I've got a water bottle. I've got a banana. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, I got stuck. Should have got the bean blast. Maybe we need to fix that so you can get through. Kind of got stuck. All right, let's restart. <laughs> I love that little guy. I really enjoy the controls It's of the trolley. It's less floaty than when I coded it originally. I also prefer this camera angle. I feel like this would be better with the controller. No, don't want to get covered. Oh yeah, Saul said there was a bug where the uh, the bean blast is currently zero. I suppose I can pick that up nicely. Oh, no one wants it. It doesn't need a banana. Let's get the free bean blast unlocked. Press space bar to use the bean blast. Can I actually get some money then for the banana? Oh, 100, $100. Oh, the box was actually a loaf of bread. Get the loaf of bread in. 200. I'm not very good at the, the game. Uh, let's give it a, one more one more go. Let's have a look. I like doing donuts. I feel like the timer... I guess if we spent more time on this, what I'd probably recommend is maybe removing the timer and having like a health system. See how long it can last. Or ways of increasing the time. Like maybe every successful delivery add like, you know, 10 seconds or something back onto your time. I also feel the, the power of the baked beans are uh, just too, too high. You get overwhelmed, <laughs> you just can't, you can't bash through them. Maybe like a jump ability would be quite good. Woo! No, just stuck again. Yeah, this, this isn't good, good game design. And th this is all my fault. This, I coded this bit originally. Um, the beans just kind of stick around you. Now you can't move. I feel like maybe the mass of the rigid bodies needs to be a lot lower. Alright, I really enjoy it. it. It needs some improvement, but you know, for a project that's just been around five people, I think that we've we each spent about three, four hours on it. Yeah, I'm pretty impressed. It seems like it's good, good fun. But enough of me playing, let's go back to future me um, to discuss the project. Overall, I'm really happy with how this project turned out. It was a lot of fun collaborating and talking with other developers and content creators. Game dev and YouTube can be quite a lonely kind of thing you normally you know you're insular you're on yourself just coding away or designing something uh, so it was great to actually collaborate and pass stuff back and forth with, uh, with a good team i've put the source code for the project up on itch as well as the game and you can download both of them free of charge the game isn't perfect there's a few issues which i mentioned in my reaction video i'll try and get some time to just like make a few minor tweaks so it's just slightly less frustrating 
If I do manage to do that, I'll update the itch page and I'll post on my socials if that's been done. But thanks for watching. Please do go check out all of the other content creators. I'll put all of their links below. The likelihood is you've probably found my channel from them because some of them are bigger than my channel. And if you have, hi, welcome. I hopefully you'll stick around. If you'd like to see any more collabs like this in the future, let me know who you'd like to see me work with and what you'd like to see. And I'll try and make it happen. In the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.